people have a tendency to speak with feigned lips. It's just they don't really mean it. They just want to make themselves look good or sound good to God. And it's really, 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 really important that you be real, not just in front of other people, but to God. I mean, he's talking about, you know, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer. Like, I'm going to you, Lord. I'm asking you for something. You know, God can see through your, your hypocrisy. God could see through being fake. God could see through, in, like, all the way into your heart. So uh, be real with God. He wants you to come to him in truth and not have feign lips and fake it. Like, you need to be real with him. And it, it, it's kind of sad that you should even, that I should even have to say something like that, but I feel compelled I have to because of how many people are out there that, that do the exact opposite. They, they, their heart is not right. And we see over and over again how many people there are that will, that will pray and cry unto the Lord out of feigned lips. And if you want God to hear you, that's why he's saying, hear me, because I'm not speaking with, with feigned lips. I'm not, I'm not faking it. This is real, Lord. Please hear me and listen to me. Verse 2, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. So the sentence is not the sentence of his words. It's talking about the sentence like a judgment, right? Like someone, you know, a sentence being carried out. Let, the, let my sentence come forth from thy presence present. So he's asking, you know, judge me in whatever my sentence is, let that come forth from you. You don't want to be judged from other people. You want God, you know, judge me, Lord, let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. So he's just asking for equality and good and right judgment and justice, which of course we know we get from the Lord anyways, but he's just, you know, he's, he's bringing that in to his prayer, because as we continue to go through this, he's going to give these reasons why, like, hey, I'm doing right. I want some, some, some equity here. Give me good judgment. You know that I'm not, I'm not faking this. This is real, Lord. I'm not being wicked. You know, I'm, I'm doing what's right, and all these other things. We see, look at verse number three. He says, thou hast proved mine heart. So he's like, you, you know my heart. You've tested it. You proved it. You know what's in my heart. And we see the confidence here in the psalmist in Psalm 17 of knowing what's in his own heart and being confident in going to God and saying, God, you proved my heart. I'm not faking this. You know this is real, so please give me good judgment. And anybody who's living right and is, and is doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know, ought to have the boldness to be able to go to the Lord and, and you know, be able to ask for things and cry unto the Lord, seek Him, pray unto Him, but do so in integrity of heart. If you really want prayers to be heard and answered, you have to go to God with integrity of heart, which means, you know, here you're not faking the things he's saying, but on, and on the other hand, you're actually listening to what the Lord's saying as well. You're doing, you're doing both, right? You're communicating truthfully, and you're open to being receptive, to being corrected from the word of the Lord, and everything you're doing, God knows your heart, right? Thou hast visited me in the night, thou hast tried me, look at this, and shalt find nothing. Saying, I know you're not going to find like some some major faults and flaws within me because I've been doing good. He says, you visited me in the night, and you think about the night as a time where you were kind of like when you're all alone. There's no one else around. You don't have any any reason to put on a show for anyone. He's like, you you know me even in the night. You know me all alone. You've seen my heart, and you've tried me. You've tested me. You you've checked my heart, and you're not going to find anything there. You're not going to find anything amiss, anything wrong, any reason not to listen to me. And then he goes on to say this, and I, this is a really strong statement here at the end of verse 3, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. 